Hello everyone. This is Anna from A Milliner's Whimsy. Uh, if I had my own blue box and don't paint the cat. I know it's not very often that I cover all three at once, but this is kind of a special unboxing. So I figured I'll actually do an introduction and we'll then get to it. All right, let me come around. So I have a box. Um, I know I am normally out in my regular filming area, uh, which is where I've been since I started the community cast a full year ago at this point. Uh, now I'm in my millinery room. Um, most people would call this a bedroom or a sewing room, but now nope. I decided it's officially a millinery room. Um, from your view, it looks okay. From my view, it's, well, hat and bonnet chaos. <laughs> Uh, there are bonnets, hats, stands, um, witch hats, winter hoods, and just about every other millinery thing you could think of. And look, I'm adding some. So, what makes this a special unboxing? Um, a couple things. This box will, fingers crossed, hopefully be a major shift in um, my collecting. So I've been very focused on purpose over the last several years because space, time, money, sanity. So I've allowed myself to collect uh, originally shawls, millinery ribbons, and the winter bonnets. I have not allowed myself to collect straw bonnets, which some of you may go, what? That makes absolutely no sense. Well, it pretty much comes down to um, the amount of space a straw bonnet is actually going to take up and the fact that I feel I need to be able to keep a temperature, climate controlled, safe space for straw. Um, silk and wool are temperamental enough. Add in straw just makes me nervous. But, gonna bite the bullet, gonna change that <laughs> with what's in this box. Um, then the other component is a bit of a challenge, a personal challenge. Uh, I've been sewing straw for years now, uh, creating new pieces, um, trying to get as close as possible to the shapes and styles that were originally worn throughout the 19th century. Um, this is going to represent a whole different aspect of that. Um, this is something I think I can do, pretty sure I can do. But there's still a huge component of, can I really do this? Um, and what's in here will let me know. So I did open the tape earlier. Um, and I'm just realizing I left your card out there. Um, so the seller, I, I bought these off of eBay. But the seller is actually an Etsy merchant. No, you've got to stay down there. That's why I'm in here. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone does not like the too high. Um, where was I? Okay, so um, she's an Etsy merchant, has some beautiful pieces, actually has had some winter hoods that have kind of drooled over for a while. Um, did not know there was a connection until I opened the top part of this. So, let's get going. I'm actually very nervous about the light. I waited until afternoon so that sun would be coming through here. Um, Cause this has a single window, which is directly behind the camera right now. And honestly, the, the lights in here are dimmer than that sunlight. <laughs> so I'm hoping this will be okay. I was also um, aiming for the space and height. All right. I'm hoping these are in like sections. Yes, I just said these, plural. All right. Come on. Number one. Oh, you're number one and two. Okay. Might be number one and two and three. 
Oh, she nested them. Is that everybody? Okay, so we can get the box down. All right. Smart boxing. I am going to need to be making quite the order with Gaylord at some point. All right, can we see? All right, I think we can see. So, um, yes, straw bonnets. Um, kind of don't know where to start. There's three here. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to start with the outermost. So, what attracted me to these, um, were how damaged they were. I knew. I wanted the damaged ones. Um, and I wanted them in plate. And these are all, I, I believe, based on the pictures, all plate. This one's definitely plate. That one's definitely plate. Plate meaning braid. Um, damage and plate. I want to know if I can fix them. Yeah, so I just set that on camera. I want to know if I can repair accurately original pieces. Um, quite the challenge. So looking at this one, this is a nice straw plate. And we can bring the, the tip up for you to get a closer look. Most of the fractures on this one are, I'm hoping, along where the layers are sewn together. And I believe this is the one that has some fractures across. Yep. So here you can see that fractured across section. And I was hoping they'll be a little more supple than what they are. I can live with that. Um, I was hoping for a little more subtlety because um, supple straw is easier to work with. So here's the bigger fracture point. I wasn't sure how bad that was going to be. I have a few ideas in my head for that based on originals. There's a fracture line here at the top. Um, that I'll have to work on. So overall shape, these are, um, mostly fifties pieces. One, I believe is earlier fifties. This one is lined and wired. Um, one of the big decisions I'm gonna have to make is the wire. You can kind of get a look at that. So one of the goals of trying to restore these or trying to repair them, is it's gonna give me time to truly look closely at pieces. Get that up there out of the way. Um, look at how pieces are put together. The details of the construction. All right. This is the one that I believe is a little earlier. All right. Make sure you can see this on camera. All right. So this one I believe is earlier. Oh, this is actually, this might have a little more moisture left in the straw. Um, which is kind of amazing to say. All right, so this is a plate. Some definite breaks. It's a little more um, reddish brown than the other. Um, let me bring you up 
this way. There we go. So this cheek tab is much shallower. The rise is far more gentle. Um, I don't want to say gentle, it's shallow. This has a horse hair and straw plate um, trim that almost looks like that could be a three-piece braid. One of the tricks will be not causing any additional damage to that while I try to get the rows of plate back where they need to be. And we can see we're already losing. You don't belong to this bonnet. <laughs> that belongs to the other bonnet. So this one has the tip completely off as well. So that'll be fun to redo. There's actually a paper lining in this one. I anticipate needing to untack this ribbon, clean it up a little. Oh, it's got the, oh man. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize this. It actually has the fashion ties and the functional ties intact. And um, you can see on your side, there we go, right here, the fashion ribbon actually goes under that decorative horsehair plate. Um, all in all, it's got the little straw curtain going on over here. There's a little bit of fracturing going on there. Um, but I do believe the vast majority of this bonnet is just fractures in the stitching. Oh, and this is neat. So inside, I'm actually seeing two different colors of thread going through the straw. So this has been repaired previously. Oh, I do see one section that's missing something. All right, so there is a chunk out here. I can deal with that. I have a couple ideas. Um, and of course, like, whatever I do, I want to do it right. Let's not get you too twisted here. Interesting. It's actually right now, right here, um, this bow is actually holding parts of the tip in place. All right, so I want to move you over here. This one, based on what I saw in the photos. Monday. All right, this. Oh, you're gonna come off quick. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Um, so this one, I believe, is more in line with the age of the first one, mid to later fifties. Um. This is a fancier straw plate. So this piece that was actually over with the other, um, there's actually a few fractured pieces here. Let me put this up by the, so you can kind of see what that looks like. So it's got a decorative edge. Um, it's almost like the bat wing, just smaller. So this all has its decorations still attached. Has a lining. My pause is whether or not that front is original. There are a lot 
lot coming off here. Why are you... So here's something interesting. I don't know if you can see the color difference there. There's a lot of color difference between these pieces that came off for the tip that are going to need to get pieced back together and the rest of this. I'm not convinced that this is original. This feels very 20th century to me. This does not feel like a 19th century silk. And it's not the fabric I would expect to see there. But the bevel lay here is netted. It has a $10 price tag stapled through it. You can see on your side, here's the cheek tab. Some wired chenille on the decorations. Probably a stupid thing to do. I want to make sure that that is not must. I don't think it is. All right, if I'm going to have any hope of getting this guy back together, all the trims will have to come off. Everything will have to get softened. You can see here how there's been a couple different braids, plates used along the edge. I have seen that in originals. This one does have the big fracture across the cheek tab. I do think this is going to be the more difficult one. Oh boy. Yeah. So this all has to come out. This is tape. This is like masking tape. This is stiff. And it's sewn in. <laughs> Why are you sewn in? So maybe that decoration came later. I don't know, can you actually see that? Yeah. I can't quite tell where all that's going. I think this is going to have to lose all of its, all of its extras. Yeah, because um, the lining technique is not, not what I would expect to see in an original um, at all. So that'll be coming off. So we can try to get it as close to original as possible. Um, this is actually a lovely braid here that was put along the line, the binding at one point, but it's not the one that went through here. I wonder if I can peek under there. Yeah. It's an interesting, interesting trim. Okay. So I learned some laces will have like a burned smell and it kind of does. I don't like, don't, don't do what I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting here smelling things. You probably shouldn't. I really probably shouldn't. Um, just don't do, don't do what I just did. <laughs> okay. I'm going to wipe my nose. <laughs> This has a very strong wire. Um, it may need to come off. It'll likely need to come off in order to get it to reshape. There's a lot coming off of this guy. So, then we gotta reshape, reassemble a tip. So basically, I am gonna have to unpick all of this and 
it'll probably need to get soaked. So we can get it back to its original color. And then reassemble it. Son of a gun. That's what I see. So please don't glue your straw. There's some glue right here that definitely came all the way through these layers. Um, I think I'm going to be soaking that and using a razor blade. And there's some here. Yeah, some people tried to glue this. So we've got tape repair and glue repair on this poor little guy. I'm just going to take a chunk of this off of here so you can, just to give you an idea of what this really, this is the, like super dried up masking tape. The wide stuff. Yeah. So there'll be some surgery going on in there. Okay. So yeah. Um... I'm not sure what else I want to say. It's going to be quite the challenge. Now that I have them out of their boxes, like I knew this is going to be something that's going to take me a long while. I'm going to have to do one at a time, of course. I think, I don't know if I want to start with the easy one or the hard one first. Um, this one in front of me is going to be the most complicated because of the extra stuff. The earlier 50s, I think, is going to actually be the easiest or the most promising of outcome. Um, and the first one I got out has the most varied damage, but has the least number of additional challenges. And I, like, I think I can get the lining off and then back on and it's little boo-boos fixed and it's fractures patched. Um, I'm leaning towards that being where I'm gonna start. And someone just found the box. Um, I don't expect I'll be perfect. I expect I'm gonna make some mistakes. I expect that there's going to be some cursing um, and some crying. Um, I will try to do my best to catch video and photos. I keep changing my mind about whether to continue to share this or to make this, um, a goodie on my Patreon account. Um, so that's a to be determined. Um, I think most of the work is going to have to take place in here. I think. So I'm going to have to get the steamer. I have to get a new steamer. Um, I have to get a new steamer. Um, which is going to be very necessary for these. I actually think that first one's going to have to get steamed for a while. Get some moisture slowly back into that. Oh, I can make a steaming box. That might get expensive. <laughs> All right, so here's my challenge to myself. It's actually one of a couple challenges for this coming year because I do have some other straw related goodies um, for the, the reproduction pieces rather than the um, fix it pieces, the surgery pieces. So hopefully by the time they're done, they're going to look like bonnets, more like bonnets, more like they should. Um, that one will have its trims. That one will be naked. This one, this one might end up being naked because of, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know that this was here. I think this is plausible. This, no, this, no. I just don't think it's right. It feels like 1970s something. <laughs> This is actually the original lining right here. So, 
Yep. She's in the box. I didn't want you in that box. Now they're going to have to stay out, aren't they? Oh, mommy's going to have to order the Gaylord boxes sooner than later. Yeah. Um, so, actually, I think, I think they're right on the top. This is the size box I want to grab. Um, all right, so this and this and this. Yeah, they already have to go in boxes. I need to make an order anyway. I have a policy. I'm not ordering archival boxes through the winter. Ever since one of my early orders never was found. Um, it was at the other place, so it could have gone to like any of six doors on the main house or the doors on the carriage house or it could have blown away, who knows. But anyway, archival boxes are spring summer purchases <laughs> and then I gotta figure out where to put them. Um, this does mean that I need to curb other parts, curb, possibly trim other parts of the collection to be determined what that is. It might be a halt on winter hoods, which I'm really behind on anyway. It, okay, I keep saying maybe I'll trim the shawls, uh, but when I try to say it out loud, I have a feeling that's not happening. Um, Cause they are kind of like one of my babies. I know I don't spend a lot of time with them now, but it was a research baby. And with mom finding the very first one and hunting for so many with dad. Yeah, that'll be a hard one. Um, all right, so welcome to my unboxing. Welcome to my personal challenge. Um, updates forthcoming to be determined where. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.